for colonic distension, we have moved over to using carbon dioxide uh, insufflation using a mechanical device. Why use CO2 is because it has high lipid solubility and a high partial pressure gradient. Um, and what that means is that there's net resorption across the colon wall, um, making it uh, easier and more comfortable for patients uh, after the procedure is over. And this is just an example of a patient, well, actually, it's my research assistant, in the prone position. And we tend to prop the chest and the thighs up with pillows and a wedge to lift the trunk off of the CT scanner table. And this allows easier uh, distension of the uh, transverse colon. And this is what you want to see is uh, excellent distension from rectum all the way to cecum. There's a little bit of reflux into the small bowel, but not much. Um, and uh, we like for the text to actually check this before they go ahead uh, with the uh, scanning. The rectosigmoid is the area that's going to give you most problems uh, because of uh, diverticulosis and muscular hypertrophy. Uh, and at the same time, though, that's the segment that has the highest incidence of adenomatous polyps and cancers. So you really have to focus on the rectosigmoid to assure that you have appropriate distension. And just to show you that this is a case where the patient would have had a very difficult colonoscopy and potentially a failed colonoscopy. Because if you follow from the rectum up into the sigmoid, the sigmoid actually dives all the way up into the right upper quadrant, comes back down across up here, the descending colon, here's transverse, and then here's the right colon, and here's the cecum. So your right colon is actually medial to your sigmoid, and uh, obviously a very difficult colonoscopy. To show you how important excellent distension is uh, for the 3D views as well, there's a polyp sitting in here, and uh, I, I think it's challenging to pick it out. Um, however, with appropriate distension, you can uh, pick out even this diminutive polyp and confirmed on colonoscopy. And as well, you know, some of the first patients uh, that a lot of sites will get are failed colonoscopies. And uh, this was one of uh, our earlier patients who had a large ventral hernia. They had no idea. They just could not get the scope to um, get to the cecum. And so with uh, the CO2 insufflator, we were able to easily distend the entire colon and to clear this patient. Here's another patient where they were able to get right to this acute angle. And you can see that this patient has malrotation. Uh, here is the right colon, which is actually uh, sitting uh, up in the left upper quadrant. And when you look at the coronal view, here's the cecum, here's the terminal ilium. And what else does this patient have that we diagnosed? The patient didn't have a clue that he had this, was polysplenia.